This is an explanation of how to use the MALDI-TOF mass spectrometer. When you come to the instrument, the software should already be running, but if it's not, you can start it using the Voyager control panel icon. Double click on that and it should start the software. Also, the television monitor should be off before you come to use it, and so the first thing you should do is start the television monitor by turning on the power here. Okay, now that it's uh, ready for you to use, you can uh, look at a couple things. The pressure here should be in the green. If it's yellow or red or has an error message here, you may want to contact Instrument Center staff to uh, help you address the problem. In this case, it's ready to go. So the first thing we want to do is load our sample plate. So what we will do is either click on this hand icon or go to sample plate and select eject. And then we're going to press the button that says eject. Now this process takes a little while, so we will come back after the process is completed and the sample plate holder has ejected. Okay, the sample plate holder is about ready to eject. We can watch it eject from the instrument. Here it comes. Okay, now it's critical that you load your sample plate correctly into the system. The sample plate has a couple of holes here, and these holes need to engage with some little uh, balls with a spring behind them to hold the plate into, into place. So what we would do is we need to load it from this side, and it should slide in until it clicks, and there it's in the right place. If it's too far out this way, or if you try to load it the wrong direction, it will cause problems. So make sure that you don't do that. It needs to be loaded the right way, and it needs to be pushed in until it clicks. Now regarding the sample plate, if you're going to run several samples, you should probably get your own plate to make sure it's not contaminated and make sure that it's available. We do have a couple of plates available in the instrument center that you can borrow, but typically you want to buy your own plate. And contact the instrument center staff for the part number to order to get your own plate. Also, the most critical thing for MALDI to get good data is your sample preparation. So you'll need to use fresh matrix and to spot your sample with the matrix properly. You'll want to consult the literature uh, for the best way to do that for your sample. In this case, we're going to assume that the sample is already ready to go and it's already on the plate. So we will load it in correctly where it clicks. And then we'll go back to the computer. We're going to go back to sample plate and we will select load. And here, under plate ID, from the pull-down menu, you can choose what type of plate you have. This is not really critical, but what will happen is if you choose the plate ID, it will bring up a little map here, which will help you locate where your samples are on the plate after it has been loaded. So this one's a 384 well plate, and then I will select load. What's going to happen is it's going to suck the plate into the instrument, and again, this process will take a few minutes before the plate actually gets loaded fully into the instrument. Okay, the plate has loaded into the system. One thing I'd like to point out this time is the source and mirror pressure here. They're in the green. When it loads the plate into the system, it's going to bring up a window that says checking source pressure. It's trying to pump down the system after it's loaded the plate in. If your plate has too much solvent on it, or if the system is wet for any reason, it may take longer than the instrument expects for it to pump down, in which case this may be uh, in the yellow or red, and it may pop up a window saying that the pressure is too high and that it, has, that it shut down. If that's the case, don't worry. All you need to do is wait about a minute for the system to pump down further, and then select the reset button. Don't keep repeatedly selecting the reset button. If it doesn't pump down after the first or second time selecting the reset button, then the whole system may shut down. So you want to be patient and uh, let it pump down and try reset one or two times. If you're still having trouble, please contact the Instrument Center staff for help. In this case, it's loaded okay. 
So the next thing we want to do is move to where our sample is spotted on the plate. And like I said, this diagram here can help us locate where it is. So if I click on a location on this diagram, it will automatically move the plate to uh, be close to where the sample is. You can see on the monitor here that it's moving the plate. On the monitor, we have this arrow here, which indicates where the MALDI laser is aimed. So that's the part of your sample that will actually be uh, detected. That's where the laser is focused. So to move the plate around, you can use this joystick. And it's just like a video game. You just move it up and down, and you can drive the plate around. And you can see what, this is what a spot with matrix on it looks like versus down here, this is what, a, what an empty spot looks like. This may look a little different depending on what type of plate you have loaded into the system. But you'll want to drive the plate to where your first sample is. And then you'll want to go back to the software here. The first thing you can do is turn on the high voltage. This is necessary for uh, it to operate. So we'll click on the lightning bolt icon here and it will say high voltage ramping and then it should uh, ramp the high voltage up to the proper value. So high voltage on, that's good. Next thing you want to do is figure out where you want to store your data. So you can click on this directory and locate the folder where you want to store your data. You can create a new folder if you want to make a new folder. We already have a folder here. And you can type in your, your file name where you want to uh, save your data. Select open and it should be loaded in correctly. If you want to change it, you can change it here. Next, you want to look at these parameters on the right-hand side over here. Um, the main parameters you want to look at are the grid percentage and the delay time. Also, you can look at the mass range and the number of shots per spectrum. Depending on the mass range you're looking at, you'll need to adjust the grid and delay time. These will vary from sample to sample, and uh, you may need to try a number of different settings in order to get uh, optimum settings for your sample. Also, be aware that to get the best signal to noise, you should use fresh matrix and uh, use the you know, proper techniques to integrate the matrix with your sample. Down here, you can select a calibration file depending on what matrix you're using. In this case, I'm just going to leave everything as it is, and I'll show you how to operate the instrument. So we'll come back to the joystick, assuming everything's ready to go on the software. And to start collecting data, we hit the fire button, which is this one, and it will start shooting the laser. And you can often see a flash here where it's uh, firing the laser. So I'm going to do that now, and it will start firing the laser. So that's where it's firing. While it's going, you don't, you, you definitely, typically do want to drive it around to different locations while it's running because if you keep hitting the same spot it will ablate all of the sample in that one location and you'll stop getting as much signal. In this case we don't have it optimized so I'm not worried about what we're looking at here so don't worry about that. Um, if you want to repeat it you can. You can press fire again and take data over the top of uh, what you did before. If you want to save a particular data set, then you'll want to change the file name before you collect another data set. In this case, let's uh, assume that we're done. And next, we want to eject the sample plate. So we'll go back to the lightning bolt here, and we'll turn off the high voltage. And it should ramp down the high voltage. And then we'll go back to sample plate, and we will go to eject, and select eject. Again, this process takes a few minutes, so we'll wait for it to happen, and then we'll continue on. Okay, the sample is ready to eject, so we can go back and watch it extend the arm, ejecting the sample plate. Make sure not to touch it before it's extended the sample plate completely. After it's extended the sample plate, then you can take your plate out and then go back to the software 
And what you want to do is go back again to sample plate, go back to load, and then select this button over here that says load no plate. That will tell the system that you're that it should retract the arm, but you don't have a plate on there. Finally, the last thing you should do uh, to get it ready for the next person, uh, just so we don't uh, wear out the monitor, is if you're done using it, you should turn off the monitor.